All right. So you want to ask yourself, why, what's going on here? This is the answer. It goes all the way back to individual racist perspectives or systemic discrimination, meaning a group of people are being systemically ostracized, alienated, and marginalized in not only my state and my city, but the country overall. And these are the numbers I was talking about earlier. So white Americans make up 72% of the population. There's 224 million of them. 53% have ex explicitly racist. That's 120 million racists. And again, they're in, they're in every sector of society um, and being unfair. And so what ha what's another word for uh, systemic discrimination is uh, white tribalism. And it's an internal sense of competi competition with other racial groups. And it this, this internal sense of competition it manifests itself through behaviors, attitudes, policies, practice, practices, et cetera, and it basically becomes a warfare of discrimination or the use of discrimination to take out another race of people. And that's always been the model that this country uses to discriminate, and I, we'll get uh, into that in a second. So the original white tribalism, it started all the way back with the, with the forefathers, American forefathers and the early settlers, um, and they used very, um, I guess, um, blasphemous tactics to ensure that they would have all of the advantage and anyone else of, not, of their skin color would be at a disadvantage. And the purpose of that was to sustain white dominance. But first I'm going to ask, we're going to, have to do a philosophical question. Why does racism exist? Essentially racism in and of itself is, is natural, meaning this. People naturally gravitate towards people who, who either look like them or have a very similar experience. And so when you're living in a country, again, with the different uh, races that are around, the first thing that happens as a human, evolutionary-wise, we're always trying to survive. It's just automatic every day, whether you know it or not, you're subconsciously and consciously thinking about survival. And so the next thing is, if in order for me to survive, I need resources. I need resources to stay alive. The next natural um, mechanism is, I'm probably going to accumulate more, I'm accumulate more resources if I work with other people. The next evolutionary step is, I feel more comfortable working with people who look like me or come from where I come from, therefore I'm gonna to get together with them and compete with the resources that are available in the environment. And, they're, and they're, they're strategizing for those resources. And that's what happens in America on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's why racism exists. In other countries, they do, it, they do the same thing, but it's typically not always over skin color. Because in a lot of countries, they all have the same skin color. All right, I'm gonna have to move a little forward. I just put this here because I always am amazed at the, at the fact that the word race and race has two meanings. So the first definition of race is a, a group of people categorized by their physical appearances. The other definition for race is to compete, compete for a prize, right? And so your skin color is off in this country is like a jersey. And it's like you're on a team and you're running on this track, this relay race with a group of people who look just like you, racing for resources. All right, so this is where racism started off. I just put, I put collective narcissism, but essentially, um, when I say narcissism, it was that idea that God sees us as superior and he has given us this mission to go take, take land and conquer the world. Um, that's a, if I were to say something like that as an individual, you'd be like, this guy's a narcissistic, right? But a whole group of people came together and decided we're gonna use race as a tool to uh, um, overtake the world. And it, I'm not going to go through all of this, but it, it went to human trafficking, slave trade, attempted genocide, um, greed, racial pride, uh, racial intimidation, forced displacement, treaty breaking, psychological warfare, etc. cetera. Um, some of the other tactics, naturalization, only whites were considered uh, uh, citizens, criminalization of underachievement, social intimidation, Jim Crow law, redlining, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so these were the very early forms of racism in this country. And again, the purpose of all of that was this, increased resource holding potential. That was the purpose of all those things, to ensure dominance. And so uh, when people ask me, they say, why do you think in America white people are more successful? Because in the beginning, they were, it's not that they were smarter, but that group of people, that generation, were just a little more willing to engage in treachery and cruelty. And so the head start wasn't because of intelligence and ambition, it was actually um, through chaos and war. Calm down, white people, I know y'all like, I didn't sign up for this. All right, 
So um, now this is the face of modern day racing. I'm gonna try to fly through this because I think I spent too much time on the first part. Um, but on the end, in, in general, black males, this, this is data on black males. When they, they have trouble basically completing a bachelor's degree in six years. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? There's a, there's a racialized answer and there's a, a more uh, systemic answer. But black males and black females, they go to schools with less monetary and curricular resources, overcrowded schools, inadequate uh, facilities, inadequately trained and overworked teachers, and they're taught by different and inferior curriculum. So when they get to college, they're not able to keep up because they, they never were situated in a school um, that gave them the resources they needed to be successful in college. Why are black people more likely to be um, unemployed than whites? Why are they more likely to be living in poverty? The racialized answer is, oh, because they're lazy, they don't try, they don't want to work. The systemic answer is this. Um, black Americans are more likely to be victim of job application profiling based upon name and address. Um, what that means is this. Um, a study was done by some economists at Harvard, and basically what they did was this. They took 5,000 resumes, and they gave all these people equal qualifications, equal credentials, equal background, and equal history. They, the only difference was this. They, they took the 5,000 and broke it in two piles of 2,500. The pile on the left had named traditional white sounding names. The pile on the left had traditional black sounding names. And so what happens was they, they sent all those applications to different jobs and, and, and firms looking for workers across the country. What they found was that uh, applicants with black sounding names were 50% less likely to get an interview, to get offered an interview. And so that's what, when you hear the job application profiling, what that means is this. If my name is Jamal Williams, because of the, one of the 150 million races that works around the country in HR, et cetera, they're like, oh, he's black. We're going to put that one in the trash and we're going to call, what's a good white name? Ted. Ted? Okay, Ted. We're going to call Ted Vandenbosch, right? Okay. All right. I got to get y'all laughing. I'm starting to wake up. Okay. <laughs> um, and it, 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 in general, black males have more difficulty getting jobs no matter what level of education they have. And then once they finally get the job, they're more likely to experience employment discrimination and they, and they earn less than their white counterparts despite having the same qualifications and um, credentials. So why do black Americans have trouble saving their earnings? This kind of goes back to the poverty thing. Either one is because they're, they're ignorant and they don't spend their money right or something with the system. Well, let's find out. Um, I call this crooked and kind, meaning this, and this is historical. Um, black Americans, they get higher interest rates, higher car loans uh, interest rates. They pay more for car insurance, life insurance, and credit card interest rates. This is across the board. Having similar credit scores, similar incomes, someone looks at that application and says, your interest rate is 5%, yours is going to be 10. So not only, as I, the previous slide showed, they're making less money because of discrimination, and then with the less that they're making, the system, the banking systems, are taking more of what they don't even really have. Uh, over the past several decades, this is just a sentence here, uh, poor whites get approved for um, auto loans, or is that, oh, home loans more uh, often than uh, black people who aren't poor. Again, systemic. Here's an example, if you ever get bored, it would blow your mind, it blew mine. Um, another thing, if some of you guys that might be going to sociology or history, if you want, uh, I have a bibliography that has um, references for all this information. Um, let me know, let Becky know. I have my email address at the end of this PowerPoint. You can email me and say, hey, can I get the bibliography for the stats you gave and I can send that to you. Um, if you go to the U.S. Department of Justice, you will find pages and pages of lawsuits related to racial discrimination. And these are just some of the few big banks in the country who have been sued by the Department of Justice for unfairly um, um, giving unfair interest rates to black Americans. Black Americans. I was a part of this one here, Ally Bank. I bought a Hummer in 2012, my dream car, right? Got me a little black Hummer and I was chilling. Uh, Should have got a white Hummer, that's probably where I messed up, right? okay. <laughs> All right, I'm getting warmed up, okay. So what happened was I got a letter in the mail and it was like, hey, you're a part of a, a class action lawsuit against Ally Bank because they found that they were giving higher interest rates to blacks, Hispanics, and Asians. Um, 
Like I said, go, if you go to that website, it's like pages and pages. And so a lot of these companies, they get sued, and they understand that if we get higher interest rates for 10 years, and then we, only, we get sued for $330 million, we've already made a billion dollars. So it's almost like worth the risk. And so they do it consistently, regularly. Why, are black, um, why do black males, they only make up 6% of the population, but 49% of the prison population? If you, and black male youth, same thing. 6% of the population for youth, 32% of juvenile system. Either it's, again, genetic, either they have a crime gene, right? They just can't help but commit crimes, or there's something in the system. Well, first of all, the reason why there's more juveniles, black juveniles than uh, white juveniles proportionately, is because they're more likely to be tried as adults, even though they're juveniles. They're more likely to receive disciplinary action instead of receiving treatment and they're more likely to receive longer jail sentences. Black males, adult black males. So, they're, black males are three times more likely to be pulled over by the police. They're three times more likely to have their vehicle searched by the police. They're 20% less likely to have drugs and weapons on them than white males. And uh, they account for 40% of unarmed citizens shot by police. What I'm saying is this, if you pull over 10 white men, you're gonna find that more of those white men have either guns and or drugs on them than if you pull over 10 black men. The, the problem is they're pulling over 20 black men and only 10 white guys. And so at the end of the day, in the cell block, there's more black guys in there because of just sheer numbers of profiling, racial profiling. And then once you get a criminal record, it's like a system. Now I can't get a job. Now I can't vote in certain uh, countries. Now I can't serve on the jury. Now I can't get student loans. Now I can't bear arms. Now I can't find housing, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes this cycle of poverty, because that's all it leads to. And the way they manage that poverty is with the criminal justice system. You can't find a job. Now you got to find another way to, get to, to make it. And that way that you find is going to lead you in, uh, back in prison. So it's a, it's a huge trap. Okay, I'm gonna fly through this. This, this is the worst. Okay, so is ra American racism killing black America? S um, step one, they did research medical students. These are just medical students still going through the system. They report that when they're talking about the future, they would prefer to work, to prefer to work to not work with black American patients. What's even worse um, is currently, people who are current physicians of all races, say that they would prefer not to work with black American patients. And so what happens is they did the research on currently acting physicians, and they found that because of that a natural aversion that doctors have, remember there's 100, what, 120 million of them out here, they talk faster, they have shorter interaction just when they're meeting with a the doctor, they are less patient-centered, and they're more likely to use anxiety-related um, terms. And this is all a manifestation of that internal aversion. All right, now I'm gonna skip some more. Black babies, um, when black babies report pain at the same level as white babies, they get lower um, doses of pain medication. What all that leads to in this country is a, I call it a white superiority complex, meaning this, I have a history of success. I deny the impact of racism on people's progress. I feel like it's my personal effort, ambition, and intelligence that's got me where I'm going. Solely that. No assistance from racism. Therefore, now I start to judge black people. You must not be trying hard enough. Oh, I'm the starting quarterback because the second string quarterback, he's not working hard enough. He's not that good. And that turns into frustration. It's like, oh, man, you know, they're not even trying, et cetera. And then that frustration, what it does, it expresses itself through further racism, stigma, and discrimination. All right.